So it's been, as always, far too long since I last did a video. And it's mainly because I've had a lot of work to do, and actually a lot has happened since I last did something about the printer. Um, it's not running at the moment. Well, I'm not printing anything at the moment, but the first biggest difference, obviously, is this. I'm no longer using the same extrusion head that I was using. It's a J-head extruder. Um, because I had a series of failures that basically warranted replacing it. And in replacing it, I determined that it was actually the cause of my grinding filament issues. There's a PTFE tubing inside of the J-head extruder and for some reason down near the base it contracted a bunch and uh, was actually binding up on the filament uh, getting stuck. Uh, I dremeled it out but I had some other failures afterwards and ended up just upgrading, well not upgrading but deciding to try a different type of extruder head. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce this one but it's I think it's B-U-D-A-S-C-H-N-O-Z-Z-L-E, I think. Um, but it's the same 0.35 millimeter uh, extrusion diameter. <clears throat> it takes my same three, or three millimeter filament, which I also replaced. I'm using uh, some just gray ABS from, I think, I want to say... Maker Farm? I don't remember who exactly I bought it from, but it's actually a lot better than the um, white ABS that I was printing which, with, which I have a sneaking suspicion was blended. Um, and I guess the moral of that story is don't buy cheap filament because it's just crap. Um, and buy from someone who you can actually know has good filament. Um, in addition to changing out this in the filament. I also had a, uh, a heat bed failure, which was basically um, the wire that's running to the heat bed had snapped off. The, uh, the wire going to its 12 gauge, I think, which is actually a really stiff wire, and uh, the connections where it's soldered onto the bed aren't very you know, they, they can't actually take a load, so it must have got snag, uh, snagged on something and then just snapped off. So in taking that apart, I uh, replaced the old wire I had. If you recall, it was um, a really kind of thin, I think 18 gauge, which uh, isn't horrible when you're using it in short distances, but um, really isn't ideal when you're pushing this type of power through it. Um, so I was generously given, uh, I think this is also 12 gauge, I was given, generally given, generously given some 12 gauge wire to swap out for my 18 gauge that I was very gracious for. And when I finally had the print bed fail, I kind of had enough spare time and reason to swap them out. Um, so overall, I have things printing fairly well, except in swapping out the wires to the heat bed, I've gotten some interesting interesting behavior, basically. I'm going to come over here and see if I can explain this. Um, a while ago, I had printed a uh, hollow cube uh, with Sky and Forge. It's kind of a neat little print. Um, it just doesn't really take much from the printer to do, and it's a decent test of bridging. Um, so I printed that, and after having the nozzle swap, or after having the nozzle change, and the wire change, and the filament change, um, I was told by someone that I should try giving Slicer a chance. This was printed with Sky and Forge, so I decided to do that, and it resulted in this. Um, I don't think this is Slicer's fault obviously because the top of it's actually pretty good. So if you just kind of look at this, it's actually pretty comparable. Um, I don't know if I can get the camera to actually focus well enough, but um, there's obviously some interesting stuff going on here. Mainly, most importantly to me, 
um, this base here, this contraction, and it's, it's happening pretty severely at each corner. Um, I took my calipers to it and I think this upper side on both these cubes is um, something like 25 millimeters, I think. But if you were to measure from, say, corner to corner down here, it's like 21 millimeters. Um, there's a whole two millimeters on each side that we're losing because of this contraction. And you can kind of see, so it starts laying a line and then the line kind of curls up near the edges for whatever reasons. And then it goes to lay the next one underneath it and it misses because there's nothing there and it ends up blobbing up like that, you know, in that horrible fashion. Um, so I didn't really know what to do about this. And I had a sneaking suspicion that it was actually because of the print bed. So I did something rash that I knew I could fix and I cut power to my print bed. Um, so this thing when it's on, it's completely cold. It's no different from any other print bed with you know tape on top of it. And aside from prints not sticking when you do that, in fact, I started printing this and it had actually um, came loose from the board. You can see how, you know, all the warping things everyone talks about when printing with unheated print beds are apparent here. You can see how the corners curl up and it just comes loose from the bed. That's why this print had, I had to stop because it came loose and now you can see how the extruder was laying lines in the wrong place. But I finally got that to do a good print and that's this. And as far as these ones are concerned, this one is best, but all the sides are straight. There's no, there's no contracting at the base like these two have. Even though, see, even the one I did on Sky and Forge has it. This was done in Slicer, by the way, this new one. Um, it's pretty clean. I actually didn't really have to clean this up. I printed it with a brim, so it would be less likely to pry up from the board, so I just kind of took some sandpaper to each side and took the brim off in the base as well. Um, which is actually, I mean, it's it's good to see this just because I've been really concerned. That is to say, I'd been printing stuff before, mainly I'd printing like a, I'd been printing a gear cube. So this is the print bed. It would start printing and if I were printing anything that had an overhang, it would start printing the overhang, and it, the overhang would be really steep, or it would print the overhang initially at the right angle, but then it would kind of curl up. So I would start printing the overhang, and then as it eventually got away from the print bed, it would actually start printing at the correct angle, um, which of course, there are problems there because there's no material underneath it when it goes to move out um, as much. And the bigger issue being that when it's laying down this line, this corner is severely curled up. So if it's down here, its edge is curled up like that. So the print head has a tendency to collide into this. Um, so if I were printing something like a gear cube and or just a, any sort of gear in general that should be like this, I would get something that looked more like that. And um, this would basically mean I wasn't getting any sort of, um, actually this, not like this, I should say, um, getting something more, so if it's supposed to be like this, I would get something that would look more like that, you know, eventually kind of correct. And that's assuming that it actually doesn't fail, because usually there's all sorts of blobbing going on here. Um, and that's an issue with gear cubes because I need this to, I need this here so it can interface with the other pieces. Um, but now that I don't have this problem of contracting anymore, I think I can actually print stuff like this successfully. But now I have the issue of having things not sticking to the board anymore, um, which are, can be solved by rafting and brimming and, and all sorts of stuff like that. But I think in general, it just comes down to the fact that I'm using a Gen 6 board, which I don't have a way 
to easily regulate the temperature of the print bed. So the print bed's just getting as hot as it can or whatever, um, which I think is why even though these were both printed on basically, these were both printed on the same you know, equipment, basically, the difference between this one is that there's 12 gauge wire coming out of my power source here and there's 18 gauge wire coming out of the power source here. 18 gauge heats up and the resistance goes up in the wire. Whereas this one, there's less resistance. The electronics are only pulling as much power as they need and the print bed's just is pulling as much power as it can. So in this situation, the print bed's getting excessively warm. Whereas here, it's it wasn't. Um, so I need to find a way to regulate the temperature of my print bed, basically, is what needs to happen. Um, and that could be, I could, you know, try maybe running a variable resistor or something in, uh, in series with the print bed, or it would just mean upgrading from my old Gen 6 electronics that don't have a way to regulate the temperature. Um, either way, it's actually, in my mind, it's actually good news because I kept having this nagging problem that I didn't know how to get around, and now I know what the cause of it is, and that's um, the most I could hope for, actually. Um, I don't have any other printer-related stuff exactly to say, but I'm well over 10 minutes at this point, coming up on 12, so I'm going to call it quits for a video. Hopefully, as always, I'll be able to get more videos up in a more timely manner. Uh, it's basically dependent on how much work I have, which is typically always a lot, but in between now and whenever, I'm sure I'll find a chance to do something that I can put on the uh, YouTube channel and hopefully something that's actually also enjoyable to watch. Uh, and you can look forward to more bad drawings and shaky cameras and you know poorly explained diagrams. Um, till then, thanks for the time and thanks for hopefully subscribing. Because I think I have eight subscribers, which is amazing. It doesn't really matter though. But thank you either way.